Now, I want to let you know some nuggets to consider when you want to determine the path becoming a PTA or a DPT, because these are some things that I really had to negotiate in my own mind and make the decision to becoming a DPT. But I'll let you determine that for yourself. All right, so something to consider. Remember how I said for a PTA, you only need to have two years as an associate degree, meaning after high school, you can go straight into it. So you're about 20 years old if you're on track and then you can start working, right? And remember the salary, it was somewhere, especially if you go into community college, it's pretty low. So you can already start paying off, you know, that, I mean, that stuff you can probably pay out of pocket right when you get in, and then you can already start saving, right? Such an early on age at 20 years old. Well, as a DPT, on the other hand, you have to go through seven years. So you might be like 25 maybe, when you start making some money, and how much debt are you in? You can't pay that out of pocket. If you're going for a private school, that's over $110,000 in student loan debt. And you're trying to pay that off while working for $89,000 roughly. That's gonna take you a long time to pay that off. On top of, you're already 25. So you're trying to get your life on check. Maybe you're married, maybe you have kids, maybe you're trying to think of a house. I mean, you're already a little bit behind. So. You want to be thinking about those things. So you go, well, okay, well, PTA seems like a great route. Why not I just do that? Hold the phone. I remember when I was trying to determine, do I want to become an assistant or the doctor? I didn't want to take orders from anybody. And that's just my personality. I'm the person that likes to take initiative. I'm the type of person that wants to kind of uh, experiment with different courses of treatment. And like, I didn't want just one way, right? I said, if I treat this way, I might get results. But if I try this way, I might get results, right? So it really can be flexible. And as the doctor of physical therapy, you have the flexibility to make those decisions and still get that personal connection with the patient. The assistant, you can't make those decisions. You just have to take it as it is. Yeah, you get that connection and you get a pay cut. But the schooling and the tuition and the debt makes a big difference, right? So all those things are something to consider. Lastly, this is something that most people don't talk about. So listen up. Documentation. Oh, man, this is a big one, okay? So. As a doctor of physical therapy, remember Justin mentioned that Justin is the one that can evaluate, make progress notes, and discharge, right? So those three documentations, just the nature of them are long. They take maybe twice or three times as long to document all that stuff versus becoming a PT assistant and you're just doing daily notes, basically just saying, hey, this is how the patient's doing every time they come and visit. Okay, they're at their last visit. Hey doctor, go ahead and do a progress note or discharge them and write your stuff. So considering that, what does that mean practically? As an assistant, you go in, you document your daily note and you leave and that's it. You don't have to do the long evaluation, the progress note or the discharge. It takes a long time. However, doctor over here has to do all that stuff, takes a long time, might even take those documentations home to do on his or her own time without getting paid. Every place is different, but that's something to consider. And a lot of this extra documentation that you do at home, where you take that home, plays a lot on burnout and your capacity to keep pushing forward. So these are some things to consider, some nuggets that I really want you to understand and think about when you're at that fork in the road of deciding, do I want to become a physical therapy assistant or a doctor of physical therapy? I encourage you to comment below and let me know whether or not you're going to choose PTA after watching this video or a DPT. Or if you're still kind of on the fence, then email me. You can email me at liftforchange at gmail.com. I'll, I'll put it in the description. And you can determine 
which one you want to do and let me know. I also do online one-on-one -on -one coaching to help determine specific courses and the path that you're on so that I can help mentor you and guide you to make the right decision that is fit for your own future. If you're trying to get into DPT school, I definitely do one-on-one -on -one online coaching for that. So if you're interested in that, let me know, email me, and we'll set up something there. So if you have a friend who's interested in the difference between PTA and DBT, or if you're on a public forum like on Facebook and you found this video to be helpful, please post this video on that forum so other people can get value whether or not they should be a PTA or a DBT. And if you found this video funny and entertaining, give this video a like. So I hope this video helped inspire you to help you make the decision between becoming a PTA or a DPT. Guys, oh yeah, can you help me with the outro? Stay lifting, stay aloha, have a happy everyone.